Over the last two weeks, I have kept sometimes late into the night thinking about the young people of our nation because I am one person who did not get a job until I was elected as a member of parliament. Gen Z demands and protests seem to be one of the most challenging issue facing President Ruto. Um, he is so like he lacks empathy, mm -hmm. Comple like, not one single time since the initial, the first person who died from this protest was Rex. Mm -hmm. Not one single time has he acknowledged mm -hmm. that Rex was a false killing from the police and offered sincere condolences to his friends and families. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, up to 39 named, named and confirmed people who have died and even more assumed to be dead. Mm -hmm. And still the president did not offer any empathy towards their parents mm -hmm. and their families. Mm -hmm. And every time uh, I saw every time the journalists kept uh, like pushing him to answer what are his feelings towards such a situation and what he will say to the mother of so-and-so or to the family of, of so-and-so. He will just say one single statement or uh, like um, I, he kept saying, oh, it's bad, it shouldn't have happened. But two point, two point something, 2.4 billion of property was destroyed and this was, this was burnt and this was looted. So it seemed to him like uh, material issues are more important than the lives of the people he's supposed to be protecting. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that he did not accept that the youth have recognized he's not somebody to be trusted. Mm -hmm. He was told outright, like, people have said you are a liar. What is your response to that? And he was like, oh, that is your statement. Not, that, that, that's not something he can relate to. So he's, in fact, the word that uh, I think Linus is was tone deaf. He's very tone deaf. He's, he lacks empathy. He does not care whatsoever. And that's the most painful bit of it. Because when he was elected, he was talking about bottoms up. He was talking about a hustler's nation. So a lot of people thought that this is actually the president who's going to make a difference for us. And if anything, Kenya is worse off than when he took office. Yeah. He has never dealt with something dynamic like Gen Z movement. Gen Z. Movements seem to have no leader yet very organized. Gen Z has threatened to remove him from power. President Ruto the other day was talking to a few Gens who were invited to State House. However, Gens have said this are not their representatives. Right. So um, speaking of leadership, we have seen so many people coming out claiming that, you know, we are the leaders of Gen Z's or oh, Nini Nini. And it's not one person. We have seen several people who are also politically affiliated to the president. So maybe you can give us your take on that. And are those the people that are there people that Gen Z's have elected to represent them anywhere? At this moment in time, I am not aware of any individual that has been selected by Gen Z and been told that we, you are the person we've elected as a leader. So these are just opportunists, mm -hmm. people who are just coming up, they've seen an opportunity and they want to see how they can initially, one, the main goal of these people is make money mm -hmm. out of it and maybe gain popularity and clout. And to be honest, at this point, everyone is being driven by whatever emotions they have within them, whether it's rage, whether it's frustration. And there's no specific person who is like financing or pushing people to do things. But there are individuals who like their, their, their presence within this movement is very well notable and it speaks out for, for itself. For, so for me, somebody like Hanifa, if Hanifa were to stand and say, okay, if it comes to leadership and there's this position, I can go out and campaign to be elected to this position. Mm -hmm. That's somebody I can back up. Somebody like Boniface Mwangi, he, he is known like he's been there, he's been an activist for a long time. Yes, there, there's um, a few people who try and tarnish his persona and all that, but he's, he's come out as a person who can be trusted mm -hmm. by people. Mm -hmm. So somebody like him, why he, why he to step forth and say, okay, fine, I am willing to take leadership mm -hmm. if you allow me to. Those are people you can back up. Somebody like Ombachi, like people who've been 
vocal online and you can see their values are clear and they it's not shaky shaky you can't start doubting mm -hmm. yeah but as of this moment in time we are just all moving as one group of Ken kenyan youth trying to fight for a better country yeah, yeah. Right. so um as we wind up i don't know maybe you can give a message okay before we even wind up i don't know what's your take on this do you feel like the church has failed the young people because i remember there's a video i saw of you know clergymen our parents going to cleanse you know um molo's mp's house because people had touched it down yeah maybe you can give your take on that as well and people are saying that come 2027 we shall hide our parents ids because maybe there are the people who might take us back to where we are right now yeah it's true you've actually mentioned two issues when it comes to our um, first the generation gen x and and the boomers, mm -hmm. our parents and our grandparents. Uh, to be honest, um, they, I wouldn't say they have actually failed our country. Mm -hmm. I think there are people who they did their best with what they were dealt with, mm -hmm. but now times have changed. The problem, it comes when they are not willing to accept times have changed. Their parents who are supporting their kids to come out uh, with this movement, and those are the kind of parents we want. But then there are other parents who are behind their scene, they are, they are complaining, they are abusing their kids, like even stopping them, not because they think they're in harm's way, but because they think they are doing something, something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also good to. Uh, for the uh, for the older generations to try and understand and be open-minded mm -hmm. what is it exactly that the youth are fighting for mm -hmm. them they were threatened and they were scared and they were able to quiet their voice yeah. but we are not willing to quiet our voices you can scare us you can kill us clearly mm -hmm. you can abduct us mm -hmm. but we are still going to stand up for what we believe mm -hmm. is right mm -hmm. and then the uh, I've already forgotten the other issue <laughs> Hiding our parents' IDs. Uh, hiding our parents' ID. So yeah, so it's like if if your pa our parents, uh, grandparents are people you can communicate to mm -hmm. and convince them to see how important it is to move towards this direction, mm -hmm. then there's, there's no need of hiding their IDs. But mm -hmm. okay, we are making a feature ID for sure, for sure. There's another issue. Oh, oh my God, the church has the church filled the young people. It it is the church. Mm -hmm. The church has badly failed people. In fact, if anything, because of the mandate of the church, you can, you can say they are just a step lower than the politicians. Because one, churches and uh, religion, they are not supposed to be politically affiliated. But now, most of the churches, you see, they, they, they have shown outright like they, are, they can be bought and they can be used to support or to like cleanse the face of a particular uh, politician or the current government, as we can see it now. Even the church, they haven't quite spoken up when people who are being killed, when people are being abducted, they haven't seen anything. And it's a disappointment when you try and put in comparison to what was happening in the initial Saba Saba movement. Mm -hmm. It is a church that was at the forefront of fighting for people's rights. Mm -hmm. But now, the leaders, you, like, they're not even hiding anymore. Uh, a deacon walks into state house empty-handed and they are coming out with a brown envelope. Mm -hmm. There's no Bible being carried in that brown envelope. We all know what's in, in that envelope. And mm -hmm. it's quite disappointing, to be honest. And I know a lot of youth who right now would rather not even go to church. They will pray to their God in their own private spaces because they think even the altar has been, it's not um, like... There is no that cleanliness of the, like it's not clean anymore. Akuna ile divinity of the sanctity of the church and the sanctuary and where people pray. So the church has been really disappointing. And I've I've seen uh, the uh, I forget his name, but there's a very active tweet who is active in getting the, these uh, clergymen's contacts and kuwasalimia. Me and Asema people continue, continue greeting these people because otherwise they, they can't be sitting 
sitting there, like enjoying their peace as if nothing is going on, because that is what they are trying to do. Mm -hmm. But they have to recognize, but it's time to change. So it's either you be on the right side or wangushwe na the wrong side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, one last one. Um, now that you say there's no one who is very rightful, Saikua, you know, the leader, do you think the protest happening right now should be happening? Because we are already done with the bill. Now it's Ruto must go. Okay, now you see people... Uh, a lot of people assume because Ruto said he has returned the finance bill to the to the parliament that it is that's not the end of it. One, the parliament is not in session, and they refused to go back to session because of this particular issue. So even those who are very much aware of what should be happening, constitu uh, like according to the constitution, they are not so sure whether the finance bill is actually fully rejected or. It is just there hanging in the air, waiting for people to forget, waiting for people to keep quiet, and then they bring it up. Something else, there's the appropriations bill that is now being used instead of the finance bill. It's not any better. Teachers are not being paid, but MPs, their salaries are being increased. We still have medical interns and doctors who are not employed. They've not been posted to any hospitals, but we have the, they are still allocating money for the office of the first lady and the second lady and the wife of the speaker. These are not people that we elected. Offices of the CAS, these are not, they are not even constitutionally correct, but according to the appropriation pointing of these uh, secret secretaries. So in theory, the finance bill has been rejected, by, has been sent back to parliament, not rejected, has been sent back to parliament, but we still don't have a tangible uh, action plan to show that yes, the finance bill has been rejected mm -hmm. and as a country we are moving towards this direction. Mm -hmm. So the protests still have to continue happening. Uh -huh. yes. okay. So as the protests happen, we, I was walking in town today and so many businesses have been closed. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to make sure that businesses are still running so that Isque Sisiwa Kenya and Dotunaumia end, you know, as they stay safe? To be honest, I feel that this is a time of, for a revolution mm -hmm. and no revolution happens without any sacrifice mm -hmm. or any loss. If we continue with the normal status quo as if everything is okay, we are heading towards a bad direction. Mm -hmm. If we protest and we close down businesses and we, we keep uh, uh, going, whatever, now they are calling it an anarchy, we are heading towards an anarchy, we head towards direction but with the purpose of cleansing our government, cleansing our leadership and the foundations on which, the corrupt foundation on which our country is built on. It's going to be chaotic for a while, but the direction at the end, at the far, far, far end of the tunnel is going to be better than if we sit back and pretend like nothing bad is happening. Yeah. So sacrifices are going to be made. Mm -hmm. These guys who've lost their life and sincere condolences to their families and their friends, they are, they are our heroes. Our, they are people who they have, they, they have died, they have bled for our country. So if this movement continues and the revolution does happen, they are going to go in the history books as the people who sacrificed their lives for the betterment of our country. Yeah. During this dialogue, they discussed topics such as corruption and public debt. And I know what it means not to have a job, not to have an income. I am willing to put my career on the line to see to it that to the extent that I can, young people have an income. All these MPs, they are elected by us, the people of Kenya. And there is, you all admit, there is a lot of money spent in electing people. That, that's, that's the real challenge that we have. So people are not elected largely on account of what, what it is that uh, they, they, they will do. People are elected because they are well resourced, you know, and unfortunately, this is the product we end up with, you know. 
this, this is the product uh, we end up with. So this is something we must interrogate together. Because we, are, we get the leaders we elect, right? So uh, these are the people, uh, I, did, I, did not, <laughs> I did not elect all these uh, members of parliament or uh, the, the other people. Maybe the ones I have appointed, those ones I can take account, you know, and deal with. And, and we should, because even in my own eyes, it is not right. People, you know, flaunting money, you know, people using the space in pulpits to, you know, prosecute politics. And, and, and all that is, is fine. And that is why I'm very happy with this moment, that we are all of us going to face up to this reality and call ourselves to order and do that which we must do. And uh, the conversation that was around here, I met the church, some of the church leaders, I met uh, even my own PG, and even them, they were saying, yes, let us abolish Harambes. Yes, let's do something about uh, our situation. We must live within our means. Sons and daughters, let me uh, tell you that I value what you do. I have heard what you have said. I have seen what you have done. And you have made recommendations. Some I will outright implement on cutting down on government lodges and cutting down on uh, offices that uh, we can. I will deal with some of the issues that you have raised. You have given me some difficult choices. I will suggest to you how uh, we can together go about the difficult choices that you have put on the table on some of the issues. But I want to promise you that uh, in the engagement that we're going to have, God willing, in the next uh, couple of days, I think we've agreed with some of uh, uh, your colleagues here that maybe Thursday, Friday, I will uh, be thoroughly clear and I want you to be equally clear on what you think on how to take our country forward. My request to you is that we have a country to keep. It's the only home we have. We must do whatever it is that we do within the parameters of the law, respecting one another, and talking to each other with respect so that we can move forward together as a country. I am looking forward to this engagement in the space that you will uh, recommend. I'm told X is the space that you want us to engage. And I have uh, committed that uh, I will find myself into that space. I will ask one of you guys uh, in that space to host us so that we can have uh, this conversation as I do what I must do to get the country moving forward. Ruto's willingness to address pressing issues raised by the youth demonstrates his commitment to engaging with the younger generation. President William Ruto views engaging with Generation Z as crucial for fostering dialogue and understanding. He emphasizes the need for youth involvement in decision-making processes and encourages Gen Z to actively participate in shaping Kenya's future. Ruto's commitment reflects a desire to address pressing issues raised by the younger generation and create meaningful opportunities for dialogue. We have come to an end of this video. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. Let meet in our next video.